Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates. We are almost one week, only one week out of 2024 Mr. Olympia, and not a lot of top guys are showing us much. I mean, there is basically radio silence out there right now. It's very calm before the storm. But if we pay close attention, we can kind of get the idea of what these guys might be bringing. And so we're going to start with Andrew Jacked, who just posted a couple of photos. And in this one, we can kind of get the idea of what he's bringing. And it seems like he is coming huge. He is bringing the size and the fullness. I don't think he's gonna try and come like super diced, super dry, like he did that one year for the Arnold Classic. And I think uh, Chris Asito also said that his plan is to bring Andrew as full, as big as possible. Now, is this the right game plan? I mean, if you look at the Andrew Jack right here, like his arms are freaking enormous. And his arms were kind of like a weak uh, body part last year, for example. I mean, they were never weak. They were always enormous. But like for the rest of his body, you know, with those forearms as well, his arms kind of did tend to look a little bit more stringy, especially if he would come in like on, on, on a flatter, on a drier, more conditioned side. But this time around, it seems like he's going to show up huge, massive. Now, if you're asking me, what do I think, what is the best play for Andrew Jack? Coming in dry and shredded, but on a flatter, smaller side, or as big as possible, but on a fuller, maybe less conditioned, less crispy side. I mean, 2023 Arnold Classic, yeah, he did place below Nick Walker and Samson Dawera, but uh, Andrew Jack progressed so much since then. So, in my opinion, if he brought this kind of conditioning, the same conditioning with the new muscle that he has, that would be a killer package, honestly. I don't know if last year at the Mr. Olympia, he simply spilled out because he tried to carb up a little bit too much, or he simply was not in condition enough. I also heard that, like, after the Texas Pro last year, he went back to Nigeria and he wasn't really focused on, on prepping for the Mr. Olympia. But, like, if you look at this physique right here, this is from last year, Mr. Olympia, like, he was massive, he was huge, but he was just a little bit off with conditioning, so it wasn't his best, it wasn't his best shape, and uh, because he looked like that, he, he still managed to crack the top five, I mean, he was still amazing, but he definitely needed to be more conditioned, harder, and it wasn't even that bad from the front, it was really bad from behind, so that's something he should be careful about. And to be honest, I would just like him to repeat exactly what he brought to the Texas Pro Stage this year. This was absolutely the best Andrew Jack ever. Could have he been leaner, sharper, drier, especially from behind, sure. And that's the only thing I would like to see him fix. But really, if he brought exactly the same package from Texas Pro... I don't think he can go wrong with that. I think that would be a very, very competitive Andrew Jack that can place, I don't know, man, probably like anywhere in the top five. I don't see him winning the Mr. Olympia, but, you know, I wouldn't be too surprised if he was like third. You know, it's not impossible. But again, based on his physique updates uh, at a one week out, it seems like he's not gonna be like a lot drier. I don't think he's really pushing for crazy conditioning at this point. I think he's like maintaining the conditioning and maybe he's gonna try to come in even bigger and fuller than he was at a Texas Pro and also his coach is confirming that that's the game plan. I mean, I would love to see him massive on that stage, but unless he has straight and glutes and hamstrings, I don't know if he can like beat guys like Nick Walker or Samson Dauda or whoever, you know, I think he needs to come in sharper, not bigger and fuller, but... You know, it's gonna be awesome seeing him on that stage, uh, freaking massive, he's going to dwarf a lot of people, a lot of people, and maybe with that wow factor, that freak factor, he's gonna surprise us, I don't know, at least me, some of you guys think he will win, that's okay, I don't see it, but who knows, I mean, he's definitely bringing the wow factor, the freak factor, he's going to be huge. Alright, the next thing we got is from Wesley Research, who just posted this uh, basically selfie, in which he's uh, showing us his leg progress. And honestly, guys, that is the biggest weakness of Wesley Wissers, his legs. Not just from the front, maybe not even that much from the front, more so from the back and from the side. Like, his hamstrings, his glutes, his overall leg thickness is his biggest issue. 
Now, if we're talking him being compared to Ramon Dino in the leg department, I mean, it's not that big of a difference. From the front, at least, from the back and from the side, it's going to be visible, but like from the front, you know, at, at least in the Iron Classic, it wasn't that big of a difference in the legs, you know, Wesley kind of matched uh, Ramon's legs, but Ramon was not really at his best, he wasn't at his biggest and fullest, if Ramon truly brings that, that fullness that he can bring, you know, he's probably going to beat Wesley in the leg department as well, that's the biggest issue of Wesley, now, do I see progression in the legs? in this physique update. Stefan Kinzel said uh, on a recent interview with Fuerabia that he actually, that Wesley actually brought up the hamstrings and the glutes, but he didn't say anything about the quads and I can see why. I don't see any progress from the Arnold Classic until now in the, in the quads from Wesley Wissers. Like, those quads are still looking uh, rather slim, you know, for somebody who is that wide, that big, that, that massive in the upper body, I would definitely like to see bigger legs. Now again, against Ramon Dino, that's not necessarily going to stop him from beating Ramon, but when it comes to challenging Chris Bumstead for the title, it's gonna be a problem. Now, Chris doesn't have the most symmetrical, the most beautiful looking legs, I don't know if it is from the injuries or it's simply the shape of his muscle, you know, his, his quads look like they were torn many times, I think it's just genetic, I think he actually addressed this, I think it's just the way his quads are shaped, uh, I mean, you know, he can get conditioned and like you can see all the details and like they're, they're not looking the, no, the prettiest, but like they're very detailed, the, the cuts are deep, he has a good sweep, good adductors as well, so in the leg department Chris is going to destroy Wesley for sure. And not just from the front, again, like from the back and from the side, Chris has really good hamstrings and like shredded glutes and all that, and like his waist is smaller, his shoulders are in perfect proportion basically with his waist and his quads, so, you know, because of the bone structure and everything, I definitely can't see Wesley beating Chris this year, as far as Ramon, yeah, that's most likely going to happen, but I'm not sure about that either. I think this top 3 is going to be very competitive, especially Wesley versus Ramon. Now, as far as Wesley, once again, here is another physique update, and, you know, Wesley said at one point that his plan is to bring a condition that is better than Arnold Classic, but based on what I'm seeing right here, it doesn't seem like that's gonna be the case. Best case scenario, he's going to repeat his shape from the Arnold Classic. This update is from, like, 8-9 days out of the Mr. Olympia, he is not dehydrated yet, so once he peaks, he's going to be drier for sure but I'm, I'm hoping he's going to bring the same package he brought to the Arnold Classic, that way he has the best chances of placing second, you know, placing second in the world, guys, second at the Mr. Olympia, that's huge, that's huge, and if he just pushes Chris and gives him a, a run for his money and maybe makes the top two call out, that would be amazing, but as far as beating him, I don't see it happening, not this year. Alright, next we got a physique update from Rafael Brandao, and, I don't know, a lot of guys don't even have this guy in their top 10, but based on this photo, it seems like he is going to be probably bigger than almost everybody in that top 10. I mean, he's tall, he's about Samson's height, and based on this physique update, it seems like he is basically the same size as Samson right now. But, 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 this is, I think this is a mirror photo. <laughs> so this mirror, I'm sure he loves this mirror, because it has definitely made him look bigger uh, than he is right now, I'm sure he is not this massive, I mean, if he was like this, if he was actually this size in real life, I mean, I would have him in my top 3 probably, because, you know, he, he is very complete, like Tyler Mannion said, he has no weak poses, I mean, like, his back could be better, his back shots could be better, but, like, he's also very good, he's good from all the sides, all the poses, all the angles, he's simply lacking a little bit more size, not a lot, he definitely came up a lot in the past off season. he needs a little bit more size, more, more muscle to basically all of his body parts, as you can see right here, like, Samson and Hardy are definitely bigger in every single body part, pretty much, but Rafael is not that far behind, if he actually made some progress from the Arnold Classic until now, then, you know, maybe he can be in the top 6, I can definitely see that, right after Nick Walker and, and Andrew Jack, like, he can be at, at the cusp of that top 5, I can definitely see that, now, the thing with him is, like, he can get ripped, he can get shredded very easily, like, his metabolism is crazy fast, 
but it's all about walking that fine line between fullness and, and conditioning, and um, his coach, Neil Hill, is very good at that, like, last year, I think at the Iron Classic, he brought him basically at a perfect combination, like, at that line, exactly, like, between the conditioning and the fullness, and he was big, he was full, he was decently conditioned, he definitely could have been sharper, but then he would lose a lot of the fullness, and he wouldn't place as high, I think. So I believe they're gonna do the same thing for the Mr. Olympia, that's the way it looks right now, like, he's in decent conditioning, basically, you saw the other physique updates as well, you know, he's in good shape, not super crispy, not super shredded, but, like, conditioned enough, and he's maintaining a lot of fullness, a lot of size, so he can definitely match, uh, like, all the guys in the top 10 with size, I believe. Not the top 5 guys, but, like, everybody out of the top 5. So, best case scenario for Rafael, 6 spot, and that is very possible to happen. What do you guys think about that? Where will he place? Or whatever is on your mind, just tell me down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. For more content like this about bodybuilding, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon, all the best, and bye-bye.